Whoa. Okay. Hi. Welcome. <clears throat> I'm painting at Kikensi Harbour this morning. Um, so lovely to have you with me. And let's see how it goes now. You're attached to the door of the car. And I've got my microphone on, so hopefully the sound will be all right. And that you you can also hear the lovely um, waves lapping and the birds singing and all the rest of it. It's fierce bright, isn't it? So I'm going to be painting those two boats down there on here, hopefully. That's my plan. I might actually need to turn it a little bit this way for my own comfort. That means that you probably can't see the boats anymore now. Anyway, you'll see what's on here. And it's important to feel comfortable when you're working, you know, wherever you are. It's important to set yourself up so that you give yourself the best opportunity for focusing on looking. Because that's the main that's the main thing here. Sorry, I'm just trying to sort out the mic. The main thing is that uh, is that you can spend your energy on observing and being attentive. And so you want everything set up as best you can so that you can easily access your materials and that you can um, easily see and draw down. Let me turn you that way a bit so you can see a bit more of the boats again. So that you can easily see and draw down what it is you're seeing. No, I turned it this way because the tide is going out and I think the configuration of these two boats will be a bit more uh, vertical than horizontal format. So that's why I've turned it this way. I'm just going to half close my eyes and identify it, at least the areas that look to me as being in shadow just now. So this is a mixture of viridian green and alizarin crimson. Just finding the darks and lights, forgetting really that they're boats at all and just um, locating the position as I say of the darks and lights just to get myself moving. And the tide is on its way out now so it'll change through the course of the painting. and. Uh, I like the way that the edge of it is there, but we'll see, it doesn't matter so much. I've left some of the green unmixed and um, seeing as that boat is green, it's handy. Because I've only got the two colours on the palette. And so I'm going to identify the dark green of that boat. With my eyes half closed, it's really significantly dark in places. So those are the bits that I'm painting in. So the dark on that side, away from the sun, and the dark on this side, even though it's catching the sun, the rim of the boat is casting a shadow onto it. And then the area that's nice and bright is at the front here. And it's a burnt sienna. I've got my palette of colours down there. I've got kind of a burnt sienna shade, or just some sort of darkish brown burnt sienna mixed with burnt umber now is what I'm using. Um, to describe the bottom half of the boat, which is a bit, which is uh, brown. And it gets warmer and uh, lighter towards the front there. I heard today a painter talking about loose brush marks, but uh, Loose mark making with um, keen observation. That's a good. That's a good pairing if you can manage it. The dance between the two of them. Okay, so there's a little bit too of that brownish colour in the cabin there, I think. And I'm going to use that brown too to describe the the wall and to keep myself lively enough and moving all around the place rather than lingering over one thing. So there's the the wall behind. Let's see now where am I? So that's the shadow on that boat, and that's the shadow behind it, and the windows there. And here's the wall behind. And there again is a smaller distant wall. I'm leaving out the van that's there. And there's a gap in the wall there then where we can see the sea get some cobalt blue because I think that's closest to the colour of the sea. Cobalt blue mixed with the dirty brush which is kind of good because I want it to be a bit more muted.
that might change, but it's just to, in fact, I'm going to change the, the skyline because um, I've forgotten my table today, so that's why I'm bending down the whole time. I'm going to change the skyline because I wanted to read as being best distinctive. Let's see, it's Edinburgh, no, it's Fife, yeah. Okay. Right, so there's something for the background. Maybe even a touch of, a touch of grass green on there. Just a little bit of put some cadmium yellow into the viridian green there, just to get um, some of those tufts of grass explained. This feels like a less active harbour than Port Seaton, where I usually paint, and I like it for its kind of dishevelled look. You know. Now I'm going to try and make a colour to describe the light. <clears throat> yeah, the light green in the boat there. So this isn't exactly right now, but I wonder if maybe it's just the cerulean blue and white that might get me there. Maybe with a little bit of radiant green in it. I'm down here trying to make it. Let's see how this is. thinner so that the white of the board is showing through as well there to describe the light. So we're having a look. There's some green crates on top of the boat back there. But they're above the canvas and they're there. Yeah, I need to move quickly if I want to get the current proportions. So I'll get the red. The combination of the two reds, the lizard and crimson and the cadmium red is what I'm using here now for the and crimson again. sort of indication of something that isn't white anyway.
and turnips in it. In order to just when it's on its way out. to turn off the video and move over there where there's a little bit of a table that I can use because I'm kind of losing the will here so I'm sorry I'm gonna do it without the video but I'll see you another time bye and I'll sh I can share what I've done after okay all the best